I want to be looking at uh, John in chapter 19. John chapter 19. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, in other words, whipped him. Uh, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him, in other words, hit him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. How can anyone find any fault in God? The Lord Jesus Christ is God, God in a body. One of his titles is Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God came down, was clothed with humanity, took upon himself a body that he might die on the cross for you and for me. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And we're about to read concerning the crucifixion of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. The pivotal point of history, of the history of humanity. The time when the Lord Jesus Christ loved us enough to give his life a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Yes, behold, I bring him forth to you, uh, to you that you may know that I find no fault in him. Here is the perfect man, the only perfect man that walked the face of the earth and no one, I mean no one, can point a finger at him and say that he's sinned in any way, shape or form. He's perfect in thought, word and deed. He knew no sin, did no sin and in him is no sin. That sets him apart from you and I. You and I, when we're born in this world, we're born as sinners. There is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. There is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In other words, we don't measure up to the divine perfect standard of God in heaven. And because of that, we cannot enter into heaven in and of ourselves. This is why we need the righteousness of God given unto us by putting our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is how righteousness can be given to us through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder what have you done with Christ? That would determine your eternal destiny. Then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. That's what I want to say to you this morning. Behold the man, the man Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Has he saved your soul? Are you a child of God? Do you know peace with God? Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Behold. The man. He's the one I want to focus, you, focus your attention upon this morning. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Your sins can be totally blotted out in the sight of God if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you don't, you'll end up dying and going down to hell. God does not want that for you, my friend. God does not want you to go down to hell. He wants you to be in heaven. The only way you can be in heaven is through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, by putting your faith in him, by coming in repentance toward God, that is a change of mind, simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him, and crucify him, for I find no fault in 
him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? In other words, where art thou from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. That was Judas Iscariot, has the greater sin. Yes, there are degrees of sin. There's definitely different seriousnesses of sin. But that will determine uh, the degree of punishment that you will undertake, that you will go through through, through eternity if you die without Jesus Christ as your Saviour. Now I'm here to tell you that you can believe on him and be forgiven of all of your sins. That's the whole point of gospel preaching. That we might understand there is forgiveness with God that he may be feared. You see, for the wages of sin is death. That's the problem. That's the bad news. But the gift of God, here's the good news in the same verse, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so it's all found in the person of Christ. Salvation, forgiveness of sins, peace with God, and a home is in heaven is found alone in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have the Son of God? Have you put your faith in him. And from henceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold, your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto him, them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him, and two other with him, on either side one, and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh or near to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam. That signifies the absolute perfectness, the perfect life of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. It's without seam. It doesn't have a seam, woven from the top throughout. Then said they said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it. In other words, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it, 
In other words, let's gamble for it. Whose it shall be that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, they parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now, this was written in the Old Testament, but a 700 to a 1,000 years before our Lord Jesus Christ set foot upon this earth. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of, wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. So here we see the compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ wanting his uh, mother to be taken care of by John. This was John that took, uh, that took her into his home and looked after her after uh, her son had died, had laid down his life on the cross, been crucified for you and for me. Remember, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith I first. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar and they filled a sponge with the vinegar and put it on upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. One word in the, in the original, tetelestai, that is, paid in full. With his own precious blood, he paid for our sins upon the cross. And that will only be any good to you if you put your faith in Christ, if you believe upon him, if you receive him as your saviour. And and he bowed his head and gave up the spirit. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scriptures shall be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. And again, about 700 to 1,000 years before our Lord Jesus Christ set foot upon the earth, in the Old Testament it was written, a bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they pierced. Yes, so one of the soldiers pierced his side and forthwith there came out blood and water. That blood still has the power to wash your sins away, my friend. God wants to forgive you of all of your sins right now this morning. And if you come to Christ, if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll receive forgiveness for your sins. You'll have a home in heaven. You'll have everlasting life and peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, 
and in the garden a new sepulchre wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus therefore because of the Jews' preparation. Sorry, because of the Jews' preparation day for the sepulchre was nigh or near at hand. So here we see the crucifixion of Christ and we see his burial. But obviously, if we kept on reading into John chapter 20, we would see the Lord Jesus Christ rose again victorious from among the dead. He's a living, loving saviour. He wants to save your soul right now. But he had to be crucified upon the cross. He had to lay down his life, a ransom for all, to be testified in due time. So what do you need to do? To receive forgiveness for your sins, you need to come in repentance toward God, change your mind, agree with God that you are a sinner, and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I appreciate that. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. Remember, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God bless you. Have a great day.